just looking at some of my stereo views from around the world. This one happens to be Niagara Falls. But I can go anywhere in the world. I can go to Italy or France or Germany, Africa, anywhere I want. I can see animals, people. This way I can travel all over the world from my armchair. In the medical field, they did the uh, stereoscopic atlas of the human anatomy. And this one, you doctors could see anywhere inside the body. And you can see it too. This is a uh, Knight's Cosmorama viewer. It's uh, most notable for its gothic window-shaped lenses, which is unique to this viewer. And uh, it has a nice mechanism for, uh, depending on what kind of slide you have in it, it can be backlit or front lit with light coming in from the top. So it has a slot on the side to put the uh, either the transparency or positive image into it. And it's uh, one of the oldest viewers in our collection. This is a, a stereoscope book viewer and it was designed for viewing images that were already put into a book such as this one and you would lay the viewer right on top of the stereo image but the mirror here is designed to focus light back down onto the image the septum in between is made of frosted glass to reduce reflection or to shadows so you don't get shadows on the image and it focuses it has achromatic lenses and by rotating them you can adjust the uh, prismatic effect based on the uh, center to center distance of the images so it incorporates features that have all in one viewer that have never been done since this viewer was made This is an Alexander Becker's Rosewood Viewer from 1857. It's actually called a Sweetheart Viewer because if we turn it sideways, you can see there's actually two sets of lenses. If we open the top, this allows light to come in from the top. And two images, the two cards are mounted back to back. So each of us Hello, can sweetheart. see a card at the same time. Hi, sweetheart. And while she's turning it, we're each seeing a different view at the same time. And then when you're done, you can turn the whole viewer around and each see a different set of views. Wait, wait, I didn't finish seeing it. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Stereographoscope. It's designed for looking at stereo views where you can put the septum up here, holds up the viewer, the lenses, you put your card in, lift it up so that it's just at the right distance. If you prefer, it was also used for looking at cabinet cards which were a little bigger than this and were sort of the calling cards of the day and you would put, you would put your calling card in there and you would view it through this, mm -hmm. this lens, so that you could see on, on the front, it would have a picture of you and it would have your name and maybe the photographer's studio. So you would leave that as your calling card and say, uh, please get back to me. This is an Ibe stereo chromoscope from around 1894. It's one of the uh, earliest uh, color processes, and it was made both in a 2D and a 3D version, and obviously this is the 3D version. And it's using the idea that inside there are actually three color filters. I can show you the insides where there are 45 degree reflectors of different colors. There's, this is the green and the blue, and there's a red and there are more filters here and the picture itself is called the Ives chromogram and it's actually three photos each taken through the uh, 
corresponding color filter. And to view the image, you actually would lay the, the three images, one for each color filter, into the viewer. And then, once lined up, a diffuser would lay over the top to give you even light coming in, and you could adjust the light coming in, etc. And then there were little screw adjustments to then align all three images till you finally had a full color image. So it's uh, quite a complicated and interesting device. This is a, uh, it's called a taxi -fote, or Le taxi -fote. It's made by the Jules Richard Company in Paris about 1925. It is a uh, sequential viewer. It holds a magazine made of uh, hard rubber or Bakelite. It holds uh, 25 45 by 107 millimeter glass plates. And when loaded in, these move in. Pushing the lever here, it advances it to the next image. You've got an interocular and focusing adjustment. And on the side is a counter showing you as you advance. And when you get to number 25, the thing dings like an old typewriter. goes ding, and you know you've hit number 25, and then you have to move the magazine back to the starting position again. So there you are with the taxi folk from uh, Jules Richard. we have to fear is fear itself, nameless, unreasoning, unjustified terror. This is a Jules Richard French stereoscope made by Jules Richard in Paris. This is the size image it was made for. It's actually the European size, but the mount is a little bit non-standard compared to the one we use in America. So it, it took its own unique mount, and it's from, you know, could have been anywhere after 45 this could have been made, probably between 45 and 52. Okay, what we have here is a uh, cigarette card viewer from England from the early 1950s and it's a folding flat viewer and these cards that are actually in the viewer you would get one card in a package of cigarettes these are from Cavender's Limited London and uh, in this series and this is number nine right and so you'd have to keep collecting till you got number nine left and then you would have your stereo pair to put into the viewer Someone say the fifties. <laughs> and you're going to say three D. I never watched three D. Uh, what's it to me? 
Oh yeah? Oh really? Well how about you look at this? Viewmaster. Yeah. Yeah, you had them when you were a little squirt. Yeah, you had a, you had thousands of these things all over the house. You used them for frisbees. You didn't care. You're out back there in the rain, soaking, in the sunshine, ruining. Oh, I bet you wish you had them now. see Viewmaster Viewer. The Viewer was made from about 1947 to 1952 and it was the first uh, viewer to have a slot that you could just put the reel in instead of a clamshell where you had to open and close it. However, this one is a very rare version of it because of what you see on the bottom. Uh, this was added after market by a Swiss company and it's a music box and when you Push the reel down. And I'm looking at a reel of Switzerland. It's Swiss music. Isn't that sweet? Yeah, yeah, and then there was a realist camera. That was a big one, man. stars use those. The big names. Eisenhower. Duke Wayne. Yeah. Harold Lloyd. They all used them. And then came the movies. Ah, the golden, golden age of movies. Three day movies everywhere. Yeah, it was us against TV and we had them worried. The movies came back at us too with Technicolor and Cinemascope, Technorama and Technorama 70, and my favorite of all, Cinerama. Oh yeah, we threw our hat in a ring, pal. We threw everything in a ring. And bows, knives, and boulders, and torches. It was all out war. It was wall to wall and every man for himself. So everybody brought out the big guns. And they came back at us with dancing choruses and big names and wide, wide screens. And pretty soon, well, there was no 3D. Movies that could have been made in 3D were lost forever. <laughs> and then there was my own personal favorite, Dial In For Murder, released in 2D. Excuse me. Hello. No. No, it ain't here. What was I? Oh, yeah. Television. All right, television, you think you've won. But I got news for you. 3D's coming back. Oh, yeah. It's going to be on television. You don't think so? All right, then I got one word for you, pal. Anaglyph. <laughs> That's right. Anaglyph! <laughs> Quiet, please. 3D TV in five, four, three. Cue the chimp.